remember one time when I was in the Army, and I had a couple weeks off for vacation for, for Christmas. And I took the bus home from Colorado Springs, and I told the man, the driver, I said, just drop me off at, the, at Skyway in 99, because he's going in Chico, and I'll just get a ride. And that was like uh, 10 o'clock in the evening. And 7 the next morning, I walked into my dad's house on Wagstaff. <laughs> Nobody would pick me up. But I couldn't, I couldn't stop. A big old duffel bag on my back. I couldn't stop. I had a home. I had to get to my home where my family was. And it kept driving me, driving me. And from then on, I called my parents and told them to pick me up. But <laughs> And you understand what I'm saying? There's something inside of us. My mother tells me, Dave, why can't I just go home? She's not talking about a house here. She's talking about her home, eternal. We're pilgrims. Children of Israel were wandering for 40 years, and they had had the law given to them in all of its strictness, black and white. There's no, no mercy, no love, law. Law. That's all it was, was law. God told Moses to tell the children of Israel, we're going to establish for you cities of refuge. At first they had three. And you'll see those on your map. And next there were three more. And eventually there were nine. And these cities, as they spread out through the land, these cities were designed to be a day's journey, close for anybody. This is a place where a person who had inadvertently committed a crime, in particular killed somebody. The axe head fell off the axe, bam. The law says a life for life. And each family had appointed a revenger whose job was to follow this man, catch him, and kill him because a life for a life. If he did it out of malice, out of anger, then his own life would be taken. It was the law. It was not a response of feeling and emotion. The law said, if a man dies, whoever killed him dies. God's law was at this point mediated by his love. And these cities of refuge were set up and each one was run by the Levites. You could tell they were Levites because they had a little red tag in the back of the pockets. Yeah, Levites. Yeah. And these Levites' job was to maintain these cities of refuge. And if a, if a man wandered in and ran into that city who was being chased by an avenger, the avenger could not come into the city and kill him. He was safe. Within 24 hours, the council would gather, would hear the case, and if in fact he was innocent of malice when he killed, it was just his nature, just what happened. It came out of his experience. He had killed and hurt somebody else. If it was not out of malice, then he could stay in that city as long as the high priest was alive. When the high priest was, what died, then he was free to go home to his home. But still the avenger might still come and get him. The only safe place was to be in that city of refuge. It's the only place it was. The priest in that city had a responsibility and that was to keep the road within one mile of that city completely cleared of all pebbles and sticks and rocks and keep the bridges in repair so that that, that wayward man seeking refuge would not stumble and fall and eventually catch him. You are the priest of God. This church is a priest, priesthood of God. Every fellowship that serves Christ is a refuge. From that, we have developed sanctuaries around the world where an embassy you can go to and 
Nobody can come and get you. And some churches are like that, especially in South and Central America, where a person can go and be safe. A place of refuge, a place of safety, a sanctuary. And because of that, today the concept is still there. You and I as priests are responsible to keep the roadway into the city of refuge clear of all obstacles. And that means hatred, prejudice, anger, things that we do to hurt other people, the things that we've done to our family and our family relationships and we haven't made them right, our friends, our associates, our acquaintances, are we keeping the road clear so they can come to that refuge? David said that he is our refuge. He is In Christ we can move and have our being. In Christ we are free from condemnation and fear because he has already done for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Every person born into this world is born into the family of man. And if they are good or bad is not what's judged by it. For good men do bad things and bad men do good things. Some really good people have done some terrible things. Some really bad people have done some good things. How many have heard of Al Capone? In Chicago, he was, he was the man. People who visited Chicago in those days were so happy when they came home, they had a picture of them and Al Capone. That's how public he was. Nobody dared touch him because he owned the police department and the judges. And sometimes they got home and they said, look, look at the picture and look at the bullet holes in my car. Those are Al Capone's. Yeah. Yeah. That city was his city. He was free in that city because all the justice was mitigated by mercy and money. But Jesus paid the price on the cross for you and for me. It wasn't a money deal. It wasn't filthy lucre that loses its value. It wasn't the little widow that has $50,000 in the bank and the bank gives her a quarter, 1% interest in, and our economy eats that up in the first month. No, no, it was a place of safety. There's a song we used to sing when I was a kid, Safe of Mine, Safe of Mine. In the hollow of his hand. Remember that sheltered o'er in his love forevermore. forevermore. No, no ill can harm me, me. No, no foe alarm me, for he keeps both day and night. Safe am I, safe am I, safe am I, safe am I in the hollow of his hand. And we are safe in this hiding place, in the city of refuge, in the very arms of Jesus. He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. But we have a responsibility as we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. In the old days when they were cleansed of their leprosy, which is a symbol of sin, the priest would take the oil and pour a whole log of oil, which is about a pint. That's a lot to have in your hand. And he'd put it on the forehead of the person who was leprous. And then he would take some more and he'd put it on his his right thumb. And he takes some more and put it on his right toe. What he thought, what he did, where he went. The Holy Spirit is doing that for you and for me. John 14, 15, 16, and then concluding in 17, Jesus said he would send his comforter, his spirit, to guide us into all truth. And to tell us the results of good and bad before we got involved in it. Isn't that good? You know? How many know that right now, that if you as a pedestrian step off the sidewalk into a street without a crosswalk, that it's a $183 fine? How many knew that? Plus $45 court, court cost. How many knew that? Well, you would find out if you're in the city of Chico and you stepped off the sidewalk. Pardon? I was in court with another person when this, this, two couple, this couple came up. They were engaged to be married in about two weeks. And they had stepped off a foot before the, before the crosswalk, and they got nailed individually. 183 each, $45 each. 
Chico. Amazing. They'll do the same to you here. Believe me, it's in the code. The point I'm trying to bring out is we don't even understand the penalties involved in this life that we live in. But the good thing is the Holy Spirit will tell us in our relationship with each other, Dave, you've gone too far. Has he ever talked to you that way? Dave, watch your mouth. You ever talk to you like that? Huh? Don't say it unless you want to live it. You ever hear that? See, that's the Holy Spirit within us, guiding us. We have a hiding place that is not a day's journey away. Our hiding place is within. He is our hiding place. In him, we can move and have our being. In him, we can feel safe and secure. When we look at what Jesus is, what he did and showed us, we can know the path that will bring peace to our troubled waters and will keep the avenger away. Every person born in this world is born a sinner. And it wasn't what they did, it's who they are. Because they're a human being, all have sinned. All. All. Does that include me? Yeah. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. The way for us to have peace is what I love what Harold says. He gets up in the morning, what can I do to help somebody else today? What can I do to make somebody else's life more wonderful? And if we would do that, see, that's what Jesus did. He came to serve. He came to give. He came to be part of our experience, to give us a refuge, a place where we're safe. He is our hiding place. Things get tough on you this week. Just remember who you are. You're an heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. You're a child of the King. You're God's child and he loves you. Let him love you. Let him guide you. Watch your life this week become full and exciting and knowing that you have a refuge no matter how difficult your life is. There's always that place where you can just go within and say, Lord Jesus, be with me now. Be with me now and guide me and help me in my journey. For we are pilgrims. We're strangers wandering through this world. But there's a reason for it. Like that little boy is learning what life is. We're learning what eternal life is. We're learning to lean upon Jesus. In the Bible study this morning, I heard them discussing that what is, what is that perfect place? That perfect place. He that overcomes, I will grant to set with me in my throne. And then earlier in that book, they're studying Revelation, it said this. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, faith in Christ. And we overcome because he did for us. We can do for others with no price, only love. Let your light so shine before men this week. They'll see your good things that you do and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. God bless you in your journey.